Right, so Big Ed is back for another season on TV, and this time he's seeking some much needed therapy. Over the next few videos, we're going to be following his journey with Liz on the brand new series called 90 Day Fiancé The Last Resort. This brand new spin off is essentially for previous 90 Day Fiancé couples whose relationships are right on the brink to see if they can get back on track at a group retreat with the help of licensed therapists. Now for Big Ed and Liz, I feel like them trying to revive their relationship with just two weeks of therapy is a bit like me trying to revive the victims of the Titanic using just the CPR skills that I learned at school. And before the first session even begins, they reaffirm my doubts by making the same old mistakes that got them here in the first place. Is the ocean heated? Yes. It okay, is good. Just, <laughs> just asking for a friend. How you doing? Would you guys like a glass of champagne? Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. So they immediately jump straight on the alcohol. One thing that pretty much all of their major fights and breakups over the seasons have had in common is that there was always alcohol involved. It's something we noticed a very long time ago, and it's clearly something they're aware of too. I'm so excited to finally be here. Me too. Yeah. Tell you pissed me off, but how long do you think that'll be? Uh, how long does it take to get to the barn? <laughs> I mean, at least they're aware of it, but still, if their relationship is in such a bad place that they've resigned themselves to this last resort, you'd think that they'd be doing their very best to avoid something that they've clearly identified as a facilitator to confrontation and fallout. For now, though, they're sober and in relatively good spirits. I'm 57 years old, and this is my beautiful fiance, Liz who is a ripe 30. <laughs> I know she's well into being a consenting adult, but ripe is such an awful word to describe a significantly younger woman. And I know he's only joking around, but given he's got a track record of dating women decades younger than him, these jokes just do start to get a little bit uncomfortable. Anyway, despite all of the drama in season two of 90 Day The Single Life and the way the tell-all ended, Ed reveals that he and Liz are still engaged. That said though, they're both very aware of the fact that there's still a lot to work on before they get married. We have um, a barrel full of issues that we have to overcome. Other than that, everything's perfect. <laughs> The little Big Ed nose scrunch will never not crack me up. Anyway, I'm glad they're not denying that they have issues, and although I doubt that they're going to come out of this any better off, I'm so interested to see them get confronted by an actual licensed therapist for once. It's a nice mix-up from the usual repetitive format of just watching them live out their insanely toxic lives. This is a make or break it for us. Our relationship is just full of extremes, good and bad. I feel like a lot of that comes from Ed. He's such an all or nothing kind of guy. Even the way he says this is make or break here without any shame, it's almost like he's proud of it. But honestly, who are they trying to fool? I mean, if they end these two weeks having broken up, who here is confident enough to say that they're never getting back together again? I mean, here they are now, but at the end of the last tell all, Liz seemed to be completely over Ed. After it was revealed that he had got in contact with his ex Rose whilst he was broken up with Liz. I don't think I have any more respect. Let me have my ring back. Oh. Wow. Wow. Ooh. Wow. I just want to move on. I mean, it's just not at all surprising that they went through all of that and yet here they are, because they did literally this exact same thing almost 10 times beforehand. So this time, apparently, about two weeks after the tell-all, Ed had shoulder surgery that left him completely immobilized. Ed says that as a result, they reconnected, which I'm guessing means that he sent her a typical woe is me type message and guilt tripped her into coming back. And unfortunately, she foolishly went with it. She was there for him and from that point onwards, they started all over again and so here we are i'll call you guys as soon the room is ready okay Perfect. okay oh um champagne oh yes champagne <laughs> yes can't forget that right yeah we'll take a bottle a bottle there you go guys oh thank you so much this is gonna go so wrongly so quickly i can already tell i mean not only are they not avoiding alcohol they're actively seeking it out that coupled with the fact that producers love to feed reality stars as much of it as possible because it means they don't hold back means that a drunken fight is just inevitable unfortunately though from time to time i wish they held back more when they were sober and i must regrettably once again warn those of you that are currently eating to please pause for a moment that's probably the best part of our fights. Is the makeup sex. Is the makeup sex. Yeah. She calls me daddy.
Why? Why on earth did the person behind the camera set that one up for them? And how is he bragging about being called daddy by someone who can literally pick him up like a baby? In fact, also, how is Liz laughing at Ed revealing that she gets dominated by someone that she could bowl down an alleyway? Oh, daddy. <laughs> You're such a daddy. You know what as well, the fact that he hasn't got a good relationship with his daughter is probably the worst part of this. I pray that she isn't watching this, otherwise she's going to end up needing these two weeks of therapy more than Ed and Liz do. Anyway, the pair then head off to the beach bar to speak more about where their relationship is now. Last season we saw the pair looking for a place together and since then they found one. A four bedroom house in Arkansas. Liz says that they decided to move there because that's where Big Ed's family are from. According to her, Ed is the best version of himself around them which brings out the best in her. However, the move is undoubtedly going to be stressful, which is adding a lot of pressure on top of the fact that they're trying to save their relationship. Well, I'm stressed. I'm... We have so much bullshit we need to fix and work through. What can we do differently so we don't, so I don't screw it up? Nice to see that he's taking some accountability, even if it is a bit tongue in cheek. But it's funny how he doesn't see the irony in saying what can we do differently so we don't screw it up, whilst taking a sip from a cocktail he's just ordered moments after chugging a glass of champagne. Well, big picture, I need you to behave, I need you to just stop talking to girls or flirting. Once again, the bar is in a magma chamber, miles beneath the Earth's surface. I mean, imagine being someone's fiance and having to ask them to stop flirting with people and to stop contacting their ex. He didn't even respond or reassure her either. He just stared off into the distance, unwilling to make a promise that he knows he can't keep. Yeah, I'm scared Ed will cheat on me. I'm just so used to him finding a way Honestly, when you're having to beg Big Ed to not cheat on you, at what point do you stop and seriously reevaluate your life's decisions? He even gave it a classic Big Ed sad little nod, as though it's something he wishes he could but just cannot control. I can sense that you don't trust me and that, that you think that's going to happen. And I want that to go away. Like, I want you to feel in your heart that you can trust me. You know what, say what you want about Ed, one thing you can't take away from him is that he's a high functioning empath. She has just gone on a long rant about how he's been unfaithful in the past, how he's breached her trust on several occasions, and how she genuinely fears that he's going to cheat on her. And he's now sat there going, hmm, I sense you don't trust me. Jokes aside though, trust is something that's built over a very long period of time, and it is infinitely harder to build on weak foundations. This isn't something that will go away after just two weeks of therapy at a beach resort. You have, to, you have to understand things that I need. I need more emotional support from you. I need your whole heart in it. I need you to be committed. Like, it's easy to walk away if I don't feel like your whole heart's invested into it. Once again, she is asking for the bare minimum, but seriously, why is she engaged him if she doesn't even know if he's committed? And actually, that question should be directed at him. Why did he propose to her if he wasn't sure about wanting to marry her? We keep saying, it's our last breakup. We keep saying, yeah. I'm not going back to her. I'm not going back to him and we keep doing it. It is frustrating, but as much as I want them to find peace and happiness, whether that's together or not, this constant circus is just so entertaining to watch. I can't explain why, but once I mentally prepare myself for another season of their shenanigans, I'm just so ready for the roller coaster all over again. We're at a point where we need to figure out if we're gonna have a future together or just officially part our ways. If we don't walk out of this together, it makes it easier to say goodbye. Crikey, that is a new one. It's usually Ed delivering these ultimatums. It's very rare for Liz to be the make or break one. Like I said before though, the number of times they've said that it's make or break time, broken up and then gotten back together again, means that them saying this now is pretty much meaningless. I'll believe it when I see it. This is news. I didn't realize, you know, how serious it has become for her. Yeah, I don't even know if I'm going to Arkansas. Such a classic room temperature move from Ed going on a show called Last Resort and then seeming completely shocked when Liz turns around and says that this is essentially their last resort. It is going to be a tough one for them to navigate though because on top of dealing with all these issues, they're also going to have to deal with being surrounded by the other couples who are all on edge trying to deal with their own problems. After the tell-all, it's going to be very interesting and intense going through therapy with these couples. I'm pretty sure I left New York with some enemies that I'll be spending the next couple weeks with. 
Just to quickly recap, in the last Hello All episode, Jovi and Ed got into an argument over the way that Big Ed was speaking to women, including Jovi's fiance Yara. There was even more drama back at the hotel, but Big Ed says that he's past it all. For now, he says that he just wants to focus on himself and his problems with Liz. I do want to apologize. Thank I you. My, I will apologize to you as well. My behavior, I'm so sorry. And to you. I it's okay. Actually, you were sticking to my side, but I was so overwhelmed that I didn't remember. That. Fresh start here for everyone. Wow, what a rare, wholesome, and mature moment. How very boring. That is not what we're here for. Thankfully, I don't believe that's that put to bed for a second. A couple of drinks and a big revelation about Yara and Jovi's relationship, and you just know Big Ed's gonna start yapping away. For now though, the conversation remains wholesome, with everyone going around being really cute, talking about the first time that they met. And it is cute until Big Ed pipes up. I'm in this restaurant, and I see this beautiful girl and she was standing right behind Liz. <laughs> this is why you're here. I don't know if Angela means that he's here on the show because he's somewhat entertaining or if she means that he's here because he can't take anything seriously even when he's in the middle of a desperate last ditch attempt to save his relationship but honestly both are true. That aside, I like how he conveniently left out the fact that he kept returning to the restaurant for months, essentially stalking her until she finally agreed to go on a date with him. This is what drives me crazy with Ed. He can't not, seem to keep this bottom, shut. Not my bottom lip, my mouth. Big Ed's big mouth has always got him into trouble. And with Liz to argue with, alcohol to drink, therapists to damage his ego, and other couples to fight, it is a perfect cocktail for a season of madness. There are going to be weekly episodes coming out, meaning weekly videos covering the show. So make sure you're subscribed to keep up. And as always, thanks for watching.